my name is Warren Christensen. I'm an assistant professor of physics at North Dakota State University. I study the learning and teaching of physics. It's called Physics Education Research. We're going to talk about work on a PV diagram. Um, so you've seen these pre-lectures, so you're all very familiar with what work is. And it's awesome because we've done, done work before, like actual in physics work, right? So the work done is equal to the integral of the scalar product of force and displacement. Yeah! My advice for undergraduates who might be interested in physics would be to take your math courses fairly seriously. I, I know from personal experiences that it's really easy to get bogged down. So with this expression, these two bits come together and we get dv, which is the work done uh, with, it's ca called the PDD work. It, it's work done in thermodynamic processes. That's where that equation kind of comes from, from something that you already know. But having a sense of, of really what's going on with the mathematics that you're doing, not just the algorithm that you're cranking through, but what that actually means and represents, those are the important pieces that we need you to understand well to do physics. Something that's really awesome about PD diagrams in association with this is that if we draw some of the processes that we drew on Monday, those were like the isobaric process, uh, which was a constant pressure. Talk to your neighbor real quick about what you can determine, given that work is equal to the integral of P dV, how, is there anything, is there any way to read work off of this particular diagram? There are a great number of, of applications for heat engines and it's something that physics majors in certain uh, disciplines need to be comfortable in how to model a, a system, right, of some working substance that's working through some type of cyclic operation, right? So what about for like the isobaric process? Do, do some math, think about what that means, right? Isobaric means constant pressure. So if we do the integral of PDV on the right, what would we get? Do you know how to? The volume changes. Pressure is the same, right? So when the pressure is the same, that means it's a, it's a constant. So what can we do to that in terms of the integral? Let's um, pull things together a little bit. Any thoughts about how we can read information about the work off of this particular picture? Yes, sir. Area under what curve? I agree, that sounds awesome. What about for an isobaric process? What does that tell us about the work done? And in this particular case, we want to know the integral of PDV from some initial vo volume to some final volume. What? You get the change in V, sure. So for constant pressure, you get P naught, whatever the, the pressure happens to be, times whatever the change in V is. The integral of DV is just V evaluated from V initial to V final. And so that's where you get that delta V from. You get V final minus V initial. That's how you plug in values when you do an integral, right? This is a definite integral. I, I think people, when they first see this, think it's crazy that you can do integrals with other things that have physical meaning, that aren't just X's and Y's, but it's, it's just the same, right? It's just like any other letter. Just because it happens to have physical significance doesn't change the math that we can do with it. In fact, that's what's the best part about doing math, in my opinion, because that's the only time I like to do math, is when it has something that's physically relevant. The thing that makes me want to teach physics, I think more than anything else, is that I, I love what physics can do. I love the idea that you can take a really complex system that you can kind of round off the edges a little bit, you know, just simplify it enough so that you can write down this mathematics, and this mathematics will help you understand what the system is doing. It may not be exact, right? It may not be perfect, but that's okay.